Hi everybody and welcome to another training video from PrestaTraining.com. In today's tutorial we're going to learn about some methods that will help us speed up our shoppers experience when they come to our store. And one of the performance enhancing methods that we can use is gzip compression and another is browser caching. And browser caching includes a couple different things which is um, turning on some settings to cache your scripts or files or images and another is working with e-tags and we'll get to that in a little bit. So in this uh, in this training tutorial what we're going to learn about first off is what is gzip compression. Talk, talk about that in a minute and we'll go on to talk about browser caching and then what I'm going to do is actually show you how we do that in version 1.4 and uh, Right now, as this video is being created, there is the first release candidate of 1.4 out. I think I'm going to use 1.47. doesn't really matter, and it should be the same when the stable release of 1.4 comes out. And then from what we learn in that particular um, exercise, we're going to apply to version 1.3. And 1.4 makes it really easy because you can just click a setting and it'll do it for you automatically, this gzip compression and the browser caching, but 1.3 does not do that. It doesn't have that option available to it, so what I'm going to show you is how to do it manually, how to copy and paste some information from the 1.4 experiment and go ahead and apply that to the 1.3 shop that you've got set up. Uh, also, I'd like to give a special thanks to Nethercott Construction for assisting with the content of this video. If you want to go see uh, Nethercott Construction's site, which I highly recommend, you can go to www.nethercottconstructions.com and the URL is at the bottom of the slide there for you. Okay, let's start out by moving on to the next slide and talking about what gzip compression actually is. Um, and I'm not going to get into a real technical definition because I really am not that technically geared, but the bottom line is that it's a compression algorithm that will give you an opportunity to send a compressed file from your store to your customer's browser if they ask for it. And not all customers will ask for it. Uh, it's just a setting in the header of their uh, browser request. And if it comes to the store and it says, hey, I would really like a, a compressed file if you have one, then this allows you to send that compressed file. And generally, if you can do it, you do want to enable gzip compression because if you have the ability to compress the files, they can be reduced substantially. Uh, I saw an example on a website where it was reduced by 85%. You know, some people say 70%, 75%. But anyway, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal. Now, there is a little bit of a trade-off in compressing these files. So let's say that you compress one of your products and it gets served to the client's computer. Well, it gets compressed and it's sent as a zip file or a gzip file to your to your client's computer and then they have to actually unzip it uh, uncompress it basically and it'll show up on their computer so what you're doing is you're really saving bandwidth and you're saving download times but what you're also doing is you're increasing the CPU load of the uh, of your customers computer so as long as they've got a reasonably up-to-date computer and and the CPU isn't being overworked for something else at that time, it probably makes more sense to be able to zip these files and send it to them and then let their computer actually do the, the heavy lifting of unzipping the file and serving it to their screen. So, you know, like I said, unless your computers are very slow, it should speed up their browsing experience in the store. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is browser caching. Browser caching allows images, CSS, and JavaScript and, and basically anything else are kind of known as components. But it allows those items to be stored in your customer's computer's cache instead of downloading it each time. So what that means is that if they're not constantly downloading something, they're, they're using less bandwidth and it's taking less time for the item just to be served right from their cache from their own computer than it is for it to actually be downloaded and refreshed each, each single time. So when you actually set this up, it, um, well I shouldn't say you set it up, I, when you choose to do browser caching, PrestaShop sets it up and it specifies an amount of time for caching that takes place before the files are refreshed. Might be a day, a week, a month, it's whatever PrestaShop uh, actually puts into your .htaccess file. And it's where all this information goes to tell 
your customer's computer how often to ask for a refresh of the product. Okay, let's go on to one more item that affects browser caching, and it's called e-tags. So there is a e-tag file statement that we'll be looking at not too long from now when we actually get into setting up the caching option. And e-tags are otherwise known as entity tags. And most of the time, when uh, an item is refreshed in your customer's cache, it's because it has expired and now it just thinks that it should go out and get a new version of it just to be sure. But e-tags allow your customer's browser to know if things have changed since the last time they viewed your store. So for instance, if you've changed something before your cache expires and it requests a new view, then your customer's computer might not know that, so they're still seeing the old view. So an e-tag can tell your customer's computer, hey, there's been an alteration to the uh, inventory of this this particular PrestaShop store, and I need to get a revised version of that file or that image or whatever. I need to get it right now. So essentially what happens is if the e-tag shows that things have changed, the customer's browser downloads a new version of the script, the file, the image, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and this is certainly better than having them rely upon waiting for the last modified date to expire because, I, as I just said, um, you may have updated your inventory before that expiry date, so they're looking at old information. So this is a very good thing, and if, and if your uh, web host does work with e-tags, then it's something that you definitely want to do. Okay, so enough of the explanation. Let's go ahead and actually do this for real by going to the back office. We're going to go to a version of my 1.4 back office, and then we'll go to 1.3 after we set it up in 1.4. Okay, I'll see you in the back office.